my um, in my yard, and it was already there when we moved in, um, is a tababui in full glory. I mean, this thing is just full of yellow flowers. It is beautiful. It's right. The backdrop of it is a is a big magnolia. So you got the dark green, and then the the yellow popping right on top of it. So it's it's glorious. Tababui. Everyone needs hope. Even if they don't think it, their actions show that they're seeking hope. People are playing the lottery. <laughs> that's, that's a sign of needing hope. People are going to fortune tellers and palm readers. They're seeking some sort of hope. People make wishes when a shooting star goes by, when they're blowing out the birthday candles, when they throw a, a coin in a well. They're hoping. Their actions are showing their need for hope. Everyone needs hope. People try various religious practices. People read the latest book on the secrets to happiness and success. Everyone needs hope. And we, we all do. It's what gets us up, up in the morning. It's what keeps us going. We need to know that what has been done in the past, what we've done in the past, um, uh, what has come before us will come to some kind of fulfillment. We need to have hope in that. We need to have hope that we're going to have some fun today. That today is going to have some fun in it, don't we? When we wake up in the morning, this, this is a fun day. There's fun today. And then we need to look to the future and be able to look forward to some things. So there's, there's kind of a picture, you know, that not fully comprehensive, but um, elements of hope that I saw in some of the scriptures today. You've got fulfillment of the past, you've got fun, and you've got the future. That's, those are the elements of hope for today. So Joseph was in a dungeon in Egypt, and he certainly needed hope at that point, didn't he? That's where we left Joseph, in the dungeon in Egypt, away from family, in a foreign land, now, uh, now thrown into prison. And so he needs hope. And we'll come back to Joseph after, each, after Easter. Today is Palm Sunday, Hosanna. Lord, save us. And that's, it comes from it. They're quoting Psalm 118 when it says, Lord, save us, we pray. And then it became, it, it became a phrase of, of worship, of praise. Um, save now. And so that's, that is where Hosanna came from, as Travis told you. It's a cry for hope. Now, Israel in Jesus' day, they needed hope. If you look at the story of Israel uh, quickly, you saw that they, they had been given promises through Abraham, Abraham, but then enslaved, and then God had rescued them from Egypt. He had taken them in the desert. He had been with them in the tent tabernacle. He had led them to the promised land, established them, given them kings. Solomon then builds the temple in Jerusalem that was on his father David's heart. And God entered that temple, his presence, just as his presence was in the tent tabernacle. It was visible. In fact, all the priests had to back off because there was God's presence. The same thing happened with Solomon. He dedicated the temple and God entered it. But then after continual disobedience, God lifted his presence, his protection over Jerusalem in Israel, and they were exiled by the Babylonian Empire, taken out of there. Jerusalem, the temple, destroyed. But while in exile, they cried out to God, and he answered their prayers and returned them to Jerusalem. And they were able to rebuild Jerusalem and build a second temple. 
Now, about the second temple, God actually, we don't have in Scripture where God entered the second temple, the way he entered the tent tabernacle, the way he entered Solomon's temple. And so it was this hope. There was this hope during that time. Jesus, Jesus lived in what's known as the sec- second temple period. Okay? It was from when they rebuilt it after the exile, when they returned. And then after Jesus, it was destroyed by the Roman Empire in 70 AD and has never been rebuilt. So Jesus lives during the second temple period of Israel, and it was a period of difficulty. They were really grasping for hope. God had not entered that temple. And then the foreign empires that came along were, had power over them, the Greeks and then the Romans, and so they were not free. And so that's the, they really needed hope. There hadn't been a, we have no, in Scripture, we have no word from God. We have no written prophet or no history of any prophet for 400 years during that second temple period. The last prophet, Malachi, till Jesus, till John the Baptist, 400 years of silence. And so they, they were in a time of need, and they really needed hope. They needed fulfillment. They needed for God to fulfill his promises. Israel was to be a light to all nations, leading all nations to the one creator God of Israel. That's what they were that's what they were made to be. After Babel, after everyone had scattered, they were be the one that would bring everyone together. That's what they were to be. Led by God's chosen king from the line of David, the Messiah. They were to have fun. They were to celebrate the freedom and the grace of God. And they weren't. At that time, their festivals had been tainted by the extortion of priests. Uh, Jesus was turning over the money changers, these guys that were ripping everyone off. It became a marketplace rather than a place of prayer and worship. The Pharisees had turned the daily religious practices into legalism. The leadership was full of hypocrisy. There was the presence of Roman soldiers everywhere when they would go to these festivals in Jerusalem, giving them no sense of freedom, no sense of victory. So they needed fun, and they needed a future. They needed a good end to this story. God's presence would return, and through Israel, once again, he would grab the attention of the world, and the one king, the chosen, anointed king, would then reign over the world, bringing peace. And so, a crowd of people traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem for the Passover festival, following Jesus, following his disciples... With Jerusalem in sight, saw a glimpse of what that would look like as Jesus mounted the cult and went towards Jerusalem. And Jesus arranged for them to catch this moment. And studying Mark, uh, I've realized one thing I've learned, and... um, we, we're all in the learning process whenever we take on a theme, study a book, really stay in it for a while. I hope that we're all learning things. I certainly am. Is that Jesus was planning things. The, the cleansing of the temple, and, and we're staying in Mark's telling to understand what he's trying to emphasize. The cleansing of the temple was not a knee-jerk reaction. In fact, right after the triumphal entry, then he goes into the temple courts, looks around, leaves for the evening, spends the night outside Jerusalem and Bethany, goes back in the next day, then does it. It was planned. For for the disciples in Jesus' Passover supper, supper, he sends some disciples and says, 
Go into Jerusalem, and you will find a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him to a house, and that's the house where we prepared, where a meal is, a space is prepared for you, and they found it just that way. Jesus was planning these things. Now the requisition of, of the cult. He says, go in, un, un, find a cult, untie it, and when someone says to you anything, what are you doing? You say, the Lord needs it. Now, um, that would work just as well as it would work if you put your keys, if you took keys and put them in someone else's car and said, <laughs> what are you doing? The Lord needs it. Okay? It wouldn't work then. It wouldn't work now. All right? It had been something Jesus had planned. Okay? It was a password of sorts. So Jesus was planning these things. He was hoping that they would get it. Jesus was hoping as well. Um, imagine Jesus' hope uh, in hoping that maybe, maybe some of them will get this. Maybe they will understand. Think of his prayers. What was Jesus praying for? Oh, Lord, that these guys would get this, that this crowd uh, would understand. Uh, that w think of Jesus' heart in that way. And the cult was very important for the crowd to get. Um, from the scriptures, we see that Jacob, we're going to see this as we go along the, um, the story of Joseph. Jacob, at the end of, the, end of his life, he blesses his 12 sons. And in the blessing, he really, it's more, he gets a vision of the future of each one. And so this is Genesis 49, 10, and 11. The scepter will not depart from Judah nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until he comes to, uh, to whom it belongs in the obedience of the nations is his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. Hoping they would get this. Jesus coming from the line of Judah, from Mary and Joseph. And then Solomon rode a donkey into Jerusalem when he was coronated, when, when, when he was made king. And then look at this. This is Zechariah 9, 9 through 10. Some of the, the, the older, uh, one of the last prophets to write before the time of silence. And so um, one of the last words of hope is this. Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous in having salvation, gentle in riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to all nations. He his rule will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Rejoice in that hope. And so rejoice they did, didn't they? They saw that moment. They saw it coming true. They saw that fulfillment. And it gave them great hope and joy. And so they chose Psalm 118 for that moment. Psalm 118, 25, 26, O Lord, save us. That's what then became translated to Hosanna. Hosanna, Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. And they said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So they, by their response, by their response of celebrating, their response of the cloaks, in the palms and the greenery and in seeing what was happening they they got it jesus jesus hope was increased the fact that they got what was going on and the the choice of psalm 118 was so wonderful uh, a hallel psalm that's sung at passover that they were very familiar with it's still read or sung at passover to this day it is a passover song and so it's the song that they chose for that moment. And they, they sung the whole thing. They would know it. And they would know the whole thing. And they would sing the whole thing. 
And so the verses, as we read right before this Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, is this, Psalm 118. See, they, they, they saw more than they even realized. Psalm 118, 22 through 24, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so there you have fulfillment, fun, you have future. You know, the cross is included here. The stone that the builders have rejected has now become the cornerstone. What does that mean? Why is that in this song? It's just another piece of Old Testament that tells us that hopefully they got as well, that eventually they did get, that the cross is part of the plan. It's part of the process. The Messiah's salvation comes through the cross, through the suffering. Salvation comes through his suffering. We see it here in Psalm 118, the ancient song of Passover. It's in Psalm 22. It's in Isaiah 52 and 53. So they're saying this is fulfillment, everyone. This is fulfillment, what is going on. Even, even um, the cross is fulfillment. They, they didn't see that at the moment, but they even sung it, getting caught up in the moment, going to the Lord's scriptures, and the Lord's scriptures was speaking it. The stone that has been rejected has now become the cornerstone what is rejected by man, God has now done this. It is the work of the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. This fulfillment, it is marvel. It's awe. It's wonder. So we will rejoice and be glad in it. The rejection of the stone by humanity has become the foundation of God's kingdom. This is only the Lord's work. But we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. The fullness of hope all together at one moment. That's what the triumphal entry is. It's one of my, this is my, this is the easiest sermon prep week every year. <laughs> because this is what I want to do every day. This is where I want to be. They were, when, when you're worshiping the king and the king is reigning, you are in God's kingdom in this moment. Eternal life if, if anyone said to Jesus at this moment, so eternal life is what happens after you die and you go away from the earth into heaven, he'd say, what are you talking about? <laughs> eternal life is now. Eternal life, the kingdom has come. With the king comes the kingdom. Every day, our king has fulfilled this wonderful, marvelous thing, this salvation through the cross that we can't possibly imagine. All we can do is say, this is the work of the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. It is all beyond what we can understand. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's what has happened. Therefore, the kingdom has come. He has sat down at the right hand of the throne in heaven, and God has put all authority under his feet. He said, resurrected Jesus said to the disciples, all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. I am the, the king. And so every day, this is a glimpse. The triumphal entry is a glimpse of what we will be doing for eternity. It's that joy. But it's also today because our king has fulfilled. Our king is with us. And so this is the day, every day. I mean, this is the, this is the foundational uh, scripture of monarch. Monarch, one leader. And that's what I, I continually tell them. They all, all the kids know this um, Psalm 118 passage to try to understand that here, the kingdom, it, here we grow up in the kingdom of God. That's what, that's what this is. That's what every day is to be. It is not just when it is, it is later and it is now. We can have this fullness of hope every day, the fulfillment that Jesus has fulfilled God's story of Israel, saving the world. He is the promised king from the line of David, 
the, the saving Messiah who brings peace to all nations. He's the one, and he has come and fulfilled what Scripture said needs to be fulfilled for salvation. And the fun is Jesus is always with us. He has gifted us with the Holy Spirit. Now, there was the tent tabernacle. There was the temple. Now there's us because his holy presence has entered us. The fire that was visible above the disciples was the sign that God's presence is now among his believers, just as it was the tent, the temple, and now this new temple, which is made of flesh, which is the Holy Spirit coming inside of us. We are a temple walking alone, yet together we are a mighty temple when we are gathered together and that's what fun is that's the fun of this life it really is that's the hope we need that this is going to be a fun day why because god the holy spirit is already ahead of me doing things there's uh, there's divine appointments throughout the day today god will give me god will show himself if i allow it if I allow the fun of the Spirit, the freedom of the Spirit today, I will have divine appointments in all sorts of different ways. If we, if we turn over our schedule to him and just go about our day with our eyes open, this, the, that, that flame is inside of us. And so God, it is working. And then... We have days like today where we get to gather together and stoke each other's flame. That is fun. And, and, then, and then throughout the week or whenever we're with any other believers, we have, we're gathered together, we sit together as a temple in that moment and God's presence is there. That's fun. And then we have future. The, the full ramifications, we, we do live, live in the paradox of Jesus has fulfilled everything. He is the king. He has authority, yet it hasn't fully, we don't see the full ramifications of it just yet. God gave John the, the um, vision of what that would look like in Revelation with the, the heaven, heavens coming down to the earth and God and Jesus once again dwelling with us. And so, that's something to look forward to. But the kingdom breaking in is, is underway, and we're actually part of it, aren't we? We're part of the process. We don't know all the timing of these things, but we are part of bringing that hope to the world. We are, we are part of the king, kingdom coming. You know, in all creation, this is J.B. Phillips' translation in Romans, one of my dad's favorites. All creation stands on tiptoe. All creation stands on tiptoe. The tab of buoy is, is trying to get our attention, is speaking to us, the birds of the springtime. All creation stands on tiptoe to see the children of God come into their own because they know when that happens, the kingdom will come and then God will be with us. Creation knows. Creation's there. They, they're part of it, the fun of the moment, the eternal moment. Creation is waiting for us. So we are part of it. Us getting it is part of it. You know, Jesus said, the disciples said, how should we pray? Well, pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're to pray for the kingdom to come to the earth. That's what we are. We're, we're to live that way every day. And when we live that way, we're part of bringing it here. We're supposed to be part of bringing it here. And that's what God's doing for us. And then what we do is we bring hope to the world. Because if we're living that way, if we're living in the kingdom, people notice. They notice the warmth of the flame that is inside of us. And they are looking for hope. They're yearning for hope. They're looking for hope in all the wrong places, aren't they? I mean, they're, 
they're all they're whatever they can find they'll scrap together and 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 look for hope and here we have this hope inside of us and so if we're living it truly if it's in our heart and we're living by the spirit that hope and we're rejoicing this way saying every day this is the day that the lord has made the fulfillment of jesus the fulfillment of all the scriptures through Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross and the king is now the king of this kingdom that I can live in today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice the fun. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then we, can, we are always looking forward to the kingdom coming closer and closer to, the, the, uh, to heavens and earth together with the Lord, and then we see a physical remanifestation of, of the triumphal entry. Everyone needs hope. Take a few minutes and um, ponder something to maybe write on our altarpiece meditation. So let's meditate and ask God for a word for today. <laughs>